Hey everyone, my name is Jury and we're here and this is going to be week one of the playoffs for the PBAL and we are the number two seed. We did end up at eight and two on the season and it was a really, really fun season, but um, there's a lot that's going into this ultimate playoff match, right? Uh, this is going to be a rematch. We did get a win in our last meetup, but let me just take a screenshot now and we'll see the Bulu this time. He left the Bulu on the bench last time, but we'll see the Haxorus Crobat, uh, Zero Aura Bulu, uh, Arcanine and the Ore Beetle. So I believe that's everything the same except for Bulu over the Metagross. Now, the funny thing is that the Metagross is, or, or sorry, the Bulu was his only dark resist. So Urshifu kind of had a really solid match in our first meeting, but now he does have the dark resist and it's going to be kind of tough to maneuver his team a lot more so with the Bulu. But uh, the, the one interesting thing is that last time I did have a Bandit Urshifu. I really think I, I can catch him off guard this time with a Scarf Urshifu. Now, let me see. I believe Scarf Urshifu should outspeed pretty much his entire team. Other than, obviously, you know, some, some aggressive Scarfers. But a lot of them I really have difficulty seeing coming. I think uh, the Rotom is going to be the best lead possible here. Out of pretty much everything here, it can kind of manage whatever he wants to lead off with. I mean, Haxorus would be a huge, huge issue, but I would be very surprised if he does uh, try to decide to lead off that way. I suppose anything that he would want to lead off with, other than, Z than, the, than the Zero Aura, I could potentially, um, I could potentially, oh, sorry, I, sorry, I, I could potentially pop a sub on, but I was going to say, um, the one other thing that does make this somewhat difficult is, okay, so last time we had this, um, a very similar interaction, I was able to get a will o -Wisp on the Zero Aura pretty early on, so I'm gonna try that again, I really don't see that big of a downside, but, um, one thing that I do, oh, one thing that I did do differently was last time I had a Ghost, a Ghost Silvali, and, um, does withdraw, so I think he kind of sees me coming, obviously, um, with the same kind of thing, but it does bring out the arc, arc with the Arcanine, which is totally, totally fine. Um, but I don't think an Intimidate drops, so this thing could be Flash Fire, which would be really interesting for my Chandelure, but uh, I'm not that worried because my. Because my. Uh, my Chandelure is here primarily to get a bunch of. To get a bunch of. Uh, Shadow Ball's off on the team when he doesn't really have a resist to them. So it does get me burned, which I'm not the most worried about, but we will get a, a potential free switch out now. If I had gone out to, to the Silvali, uh, expecting a, a, another Snarl or something like that, that would have been pretty awkward for me, but uh, let me see, because I did about a quarter-ish, about 30-ish percent. And I have to assume that the Arcanine would just be pretty physically defensive. But I am just curious. It could be offensive. Well, okay. I think it is max HP, but uh, let's see. I mean, let's just see what type of damage I might be doing. Urshifu, er, I mean, Urshifu would KO anything that's not max offensive. Um, but let me think here. If I did go out into the Chandelure. No, Chandelure is doing nowhere near enough damage. Uh, this one's kind of tough, actually. Um, I think I want to do this. Yeah, I think I want to just parting shot potentially back into the Rotom just for a little bit more chip damage. I think, I, I mean, I, I really did waste a lot of time on that play, but I mean, I, I did waste a lot of time on the early turns. Yeah, that did about 35%. This thing could actually be just fully, just fully, um, offensive here. It could be, which would be really interesting. Um, again, last time I did, I did have a really offensive strategy. I didn't even have a particularly fast Urshifu. Because a lot of the mons that um, I kind of expected him to want to bring were not particularly fast. So I felt like I could at least like do something. Or, or at the very least, his faster mons I felt like I could pit in, in and out of. But yeah, I think he's considering what he wants to switch out into. But goes for a play rough straight up. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's definitely not great. But I think it's going to be fine. Because again, once this... Um, once this... Arcanine is out of the way. It really does open up the door for a lot, a lot of what I want to do here. But again, just the fact that this thing is not... Just the fact that this thing is not... Uh... 
Man, I really do want to make this play. I mean, I mean just seeing the, the fact that, that I did about 35%, I can't make that I can't make that amount of damage. Or no, I did about 30%. Ugh, it's tough. It's really tough. Because it does in fact look like there's a chance that Urshifu just KOs this thing. Even with max HP. I feel like I take that. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. This could be a mistake. I mean, this could be a mistake. But it feels like a mistake worth making, I suppose. Because, man, I really think that this thing is super offensive. I think, I, I think honestly, that he saw me bring a super banded slow Urshifu last time. And he thinks that I would want to do that again. But this time, it's it's a much... um. It, 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 it's still adamant, but it's Scarf this time, obviously, to, to, to try to kind of deal with anything that they would want to do here. Um, Bulu would be an obvious play, but um, then I could kind of make some things happen with Skarmory. I could start to get hazards up, and then um, and then I think I could start putting this... I could start putting this uh, Arcanine under a whole lot of pressure here. But, again, the, his, the only Dark Resist on his team would be the Bulu. And once I start to get um, some hazards on, on the field, then Chandelure really starts to shine with just being able to spread damage pretty darn freely in the rest of this matchup. So, I think this is something that we can kind of maneuver here. And we will see how defensive this thing is. Because we will ideally... We, just, we do pick up the KO. Okay, that's huge. That's honestly such a relief. That is such a relief. So, I did... I mean... I didn't play this particularly well because I I did give up a lot of damage onto my onto my Silvali for really no reason at all. Now Zero Aura is really interesting to me. Zero Aura. Zero Aura here. Um, it should never take me out with a close combat unless it's banded, which it could be. And Wicked Blow should have a chance to KO. But regardless, I mean, would I burn that now? I don't think I, I mean I definitely don't think he expects me to be scarfed. But regardless, I feel like I take the damage because Zero Aura is another mon that's just going to be so difficult for me to kind of deal with in the in the overall just kind of feel of this match. Uh we just barely miss out on the KO. We just barely miss out on the KO. But it does go for the knockoff, so it knocks off the scarf, which is huge. That's huge. And now I for sure think he's he's going to close combat here. I for sure think he clicks close combat here. I could go here. He, he probably would not expect the, the the double scarf, but it's it's exactly going to be double scarf here. It's exactly going to be double scarf here. But I think he goes for the close combat here for sure, for sure. And, and even if not, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say he might play rough. I'd be amazed if he goes for for the double for the double knockoff, which is the only thing that prevents me from pretty much picking up a KO here, because I think I kind of just do enough damage with with um whatever wants to come in. And now, like I said, um, obviously losing the scarf was huge. It's it's going to be really uh, inoptimal for the, for the rest of this matchup. But what it does here is um, it it takes it takes away two of the biggest threats. Uh, obviously, the hacks are still on board, and the hacks are going to be huge. But the rest of the mons that are on board are the mons that I'm not the most concerned about, right? Um, right. Like I'm not the most concerned about Crobat. I'm not the most concerned about Ore Beetle, right? Um, the Bulu can do a lot, and the Haxorus can do a lot, but um, I think I have somewhat of the tools to kind of manage them. Um, the, but uh, but again, it, it's 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 a matter of the things that I'm not able to manage, like the like the Zero Aura and the Arcanine are kind of down here. Um, what could come in here? What could come in here? Uh, I could definitely see. Yeah, I don't think you'd bring in the Ore Beetle. I mean, he he knows that I'm scarfed, right? So he could bring in the. Crobat, but I think even if the threats do come in, even if the, even if the, the Hatchers does come in, I feel like I just take the damage on it, and just try to proceed from there. Uh, but let's see, Chandelure is still really strong here. Yeah, Chandelure is still really strong here. Francis, I don't know what that is. That is the Ore Beetle, which is again really interesting. He does see the scarf. I think he's counting out whether he just takes a hit, which is fine. Yeah, and I never have a chance to KO. But that's assuming max HP. This th well, realistically, you would probably would bring a max HP one. I'm just gonna click Shadow Ball here. Um, I'm gonna take the damage. He might just get free sticky webs on my, on my team, but it, if, if that's the case, then I'm just gonna have to rely on Silvali here. 
uh, goes for a light screen. That is so interesting to me. So I think he's setting up for a Haxorus situation. But regardless, I think I go out into into this thing. Yeah, I think I have to. I think I have to kind of prevent what I need to prevent here, right? Although Haxorus is always going to make, make it difficult for me. Haxorus is always going to make it difficult for me. Yeah, the, yeah. There's the webs, which is exactly why I went straight into, into the Savali. This is going to allow me to get a defog off. And like I was saying, I'd be really surprised if this thing is just max speed. I mean, if it if it is max speed, I actually don't think I would speed, and I think it just KOs me. But um, I don't think he needs all that speed necessarily, so I don't think he would pack all that speed. Um, I can't imagine what he. W I mean, maybe he wants to outspeed like a max speed. Um, Rotom, but I've already shown in our previous matchups that 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 Rotom was made to just be physically defensive, and I really don't think he would be concerned about a max um, speed Rotom. I, I think oh, goes for wow, that is really that's a that's a really strong play. Okay, but the fact that I do outspeed means that a multi attack here will be able to will be able to pick up a KO. It does leave the light screen up for a bit, but. I think it's I think I could, it's still manageable, right? As long as I don't let the Haxorus get out of hand, and I don't think the Haxorus ever gets really out of hand, as long as the Slowbro is still here, because the Slowbro, um, it, I mean, it's somewhat of, of, of a mixed Slowbro because the Slowbro does have Body Press on it, so I think Body Press is kind of a saving grace here. Um, I, I do have Ice Beam on the Slowbro specifically for the Haxorus, but uh, the yeah, okay, so he's just straight up going for the Haxorus, but again, he could try to Dragon Dance. I think that that would be honestly be his best play, but uh, that means he has to give me a whole lot of damage here, um, and then and then I don't think he ever gets through the Slowbro. I don't think. I don't think, but I, I mean, anything can happen, right? So this is a multi-tank. We should do... Oh, yeah, okay, that, that looks like very, very solid damage. I think he has to KO me here. And now let's see. Let's see if we can tell how bulky this Haxorus is. He could have, he could have gotten some bulk in his Haxorus. That's, that's what like, seventy percent exactly. That's a that's a pretty high roll. That's a pretty high roll for. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. My Silvali. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so that's, a, that's a mid roll for for pretty much no bulk. Which is pretty perfect because I think my Slowbro can come in, get a body press off, and body press a minimum should do 30 30% here. Um And yeah, even a bandit Haxorus, which is, is essentially what this is. A bandit Haxorus. Um, it should yeah, I mean it should max out well short of this. Um let's see what Ice Beam does, just just to be extra sure. Ice Beam here. Ice Beam on a light screen. Where in the world is light screen? Aurora Veil. I could just put up Aurora Veil. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Ice Beam should also do it, but it looks like Body Press is a lot safer here. It looks like Body Press is a lot safer here. Goes for another Dragon Dance. That's very interesting to me. So I guess he's banking on the fact that he can take an Ice Beam, but uh, again, I, uh, this Slowbro is a lot more prepared for this type of for this type of a Haxorus. Haxorus goes down. Uh, we did manage it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think he knew that he needed two Dragon Dances first and foremost, but um, I think he expected to be able to take, or, or, or I, I think he honestly just saw. Um, my last slow bro, and thought that I would bring an equally passive slow bro. But yeah, I think this is totally, totally fine because now I think all that's left is the Crobat and the and the um. I keep wanting to see Toro. What is that thing called? Um, I think I'm just gonna teleport here, right? Uh, let me just see. What kind of turns am I looking at here? Three turns left. Okay. I'm super curious. Would this thing just toxic here? I really do want to teleport here. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna teleport here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought he would either toxic or 
or a slack off and, and i guess if i really believe that I, I would have gone for for the slack off there to try to burn those those light screen turns but i'm okay here i think i think i'm okay here because what i can do yeah i think yeah i think if i just will wisp here i should be um i mean as good as i can be right i think last time you brought it really uh it really um a really kind of all in risky crowbat. He could he could he could be nasty bad, honestly. But I don't think he I think he's more supportive given the fact that he's super fang. I think he saw how how defensive my team was last time, and I think he plays this one differently somewhat, but it's anyone's guess at this point. Goes for poison fang. Okay. Okay, well we'll get the Will Wisp off. We miss okay, okay, okay. I mean it is what it is. Because the thing is, he can never bring in the Bulu anymore, and this Rotom is not going to be the most valuable. I think as long as... um, As long as I can get past this thing, then th then the Bulu ha struggles against something like... The Bulu struggles... Oh, that's a crit. Oh, cr that's, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I don't know what to say. That's pretty bad. Okay. How do I manage that? How do I manage that? Light screen does wear off. Light screen does wear off. So, a crowbat. Um, I do need some type of chip damage off on this, right? I do need some type of chip damage off on this. Oh, I think what I do is I sack off the Urshifu here. Or no, I, I, I never have to sack off the Urshifu because the Urshifu can poison jab the the Bulu. So how do I play this? This this is going to be how I win the match, but I don't quite know. I think I just... Well, no. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I, I think I know what to do. I go into the slow bro because now I'm free to get some ice beams off. I can at least wear this thing down where Chandelure can fire blast twice and potentially win this match up here. But the bigger point or, or, or the bigger takeaway here is that even if Chandelure... Even if Chandelure um, misses against the Bulu or or the, the Bulu Sash or whatever, then Urshifu can come in, clean up with a Poison Jab, um, and I think ultimately I get there in the end because because well this thing could be super annoying with with, with Roos and whatnot, so it's gonna be tough. It might honestly be tough, but I can teleport out in a turn if he does Roos here. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's fine. He just got the poison. That's totally fine. I think Bulu... Or, 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 sorry. I think Urshifu is always going to be able to... Actually, I mean, Urshifu... Um, sorry. Bulu could be Scarfed. Bulu could be Scarfed. If the Bulu is Scarfed... If the Bulu is Scarfed... Um, Urshifu could take a hit. Urshifu could take a hit. That's really interesting. Or she could take a scarfed earth hammer. An adamant earth hammer. And it could take an adamant scarfed wood hammer. But I think the bigger thing is that it's going to wear itself down over time, right? So I think I just, yeah, I think I just get the damage off where I can. And I hopefully move on to, to semis here. There's a wood hammer. It's going to um weaken itself so so sash or not it's i don't think it'll matter too too much and as long as i get any damage um with, with your shifu then chandelure just comes in and cleans up so i should be okay as long as this thing isn't scarf but if this thing is scarfed into Woodhammer, then it never beats harmony right so so we will get there in the end i think it's just a matter of how and honestly, again, this was a really, really fun match. Um, he, it, it came down again to not really having the strongest dark resist. And I have an Urshifu, right? Urshifu is just an absolute, absolute monster. It is scarfed. It is scarfed, right? Because I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive. Oh, and and we do take the hit. We do take the hit. I'm almost positive that um, I. That my Urshifu, yeah, my Urshifu guarantees outspeeds any Jolly Bulu that's not Scarfed. Okay, great, great, great. 
So we pick up the win. Urshifu didn't even have to go down. Um, Chandler would have cleaned up no matter what happened regardless. But yeah, that's going to be the quarterfinal match for the PBAL. We will move on to semis. Um, I do know who wins, but uh, I would still encourage you to watch any match that, ha that happens. And honestly, our next matchup is obviously going to be re really difficult, but it's going to be a match that I kind of look forward to. And it's just going to be fun to advance to the semis here. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with, like I said, the semifinals and hopefully the finals for the PBAL. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I once again, out.